pray that your word 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 pray that direct us as we commence this bible study tonight in jesus name jesus name we pray we want to pray and commit ourselves to the hand of the lord brethren we want to first of all appreciate the name of the lord the lord has been faithful to us the lord has been good to us in this church remember since the beginning of this year the lord has been helping us teaching us his word even when we went for the global crusade, it was a wonderful time of exposure, wonderful time that we had with the man of God. We want to pray. that your word pray 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 that direct us as we commence this bible study tonight in jesus name jesus name we pray we want to pray and commit ourselves to the hand of the lord brethren we want to first of all appreciate the name of the lord the Lord has been faithful to us. The Lord has been good to us in this church. Remember, since the beginning of this year, the Lord has been helping us, teaching us his word. Even when we went for the global crusade, it was a wonderful time of exposure, wonderful time that we had with the man of God. We want to pray and ask the Lord that the Lord, as we come this night, we are in his presence. What he has been doing in the past, the Lord will do it in our life again today. You will need to open your mouth and talk to the Lord and tell the Lord that this privilege that the Lord has granted unto us to be here today, we will maximize this privilege. As the Lord has given us this privilege to be with our Father and the Lord, in this Bible study tonight, this is in a special series we are having this year, is a great privilege. Therefore, you need to pour your heart to the Lord. 
you need to thank the Lord for this privilege and ask the Lord that this privilege we will not misuse it. We shall ask the Lord, the Lord, to allow us, allow the Word of God to have a deep root in our heart tonight. We'll be coming to study the Bible. We'll be coming in the previous Bible studies and all the meetings. Tonight, Bible study will be different. Tonight, meeting will be different. You need to pray and tell the Lord that the Lord will help us. We are not tired of hearing his word. That's why we come. We came from all the places and we are here tonight to receive. Open your heart to the Lord. Pour your heart to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I'm here. I will receive. I'm here. Your word will touch my life. I'm here. Your word will brighten my path. I'm here. Your word will lighten my path. I'm here. Your word will touch my heart. Purify my heart from whatever it is. Prepare my heart. Cleanse my heart. Transform my life. We know this Bible study tonight is a transformation time. The Lord will transform us completely. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. He's here. We have our own responsibility to allow the word of God to get entrance into our hearts as the Lord will be using his servant to minister to us and expose his word to us. All doubts, all falsehood, all unbelief should be cleared away from our hearts and will be ready to do his will. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. You must pray and tell the Lord to keep you awake. It is not a time to be buying and selling the hearts. It's a time for us to yield our heart and our all to him as the teaching will be going on. As the Lord will be using his servant to expose and expand the scriptures to us, let us not allow our hearts to be going here and there, to be busy here and there. We must concentrate. We must allow his word to have his way. We want to ask the Lord that this night we will be doers of the word. Doers of the word. We'll be hearing and hearing. We don't want to keep on hearing the Lord. You will hear and become a doer. I will hear, I will become a doer. And this year, this year, the Lord will help us that the word of God we are hearing will bear more fruit in our life. We shall make progress. I say we shall make progress. We are going to pray for the man of God that the Lord will use him more than ever before. He has been, the Lord has been using him, teaching us, expanding and exposing the word of God to us. Tonight again, the Lord will use him more than ever before. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege to be in your presence. Thank you because already you have prepared the table before us to bless us. As we dine at your table tonight, I pray that you will help us. Your word will seek deep into our heart in the name of Jesus. We will not just be hearers, but be hearers and doers of your word in Jesus' name. Use your servant more than ever before to minister to us again tonight and to teach us your word. And we shall be obedient children in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the answer to our prayers. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for bringing us to your presence this evening. We do ask and pray that you glorify yourself you move in a great way and bless our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good, hallelujah. And praise his name, for the Lord is good. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. You're so, so good to us. What about you? 
Lord, we are so good. Lord, you are so good. You are so good to me. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Lord, we are so good. You are so good to us. Lord, you're so good, you're so good. Is in the love of Jesus something wonderful, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Is in the love of Jesus something wonderful, oh, wonderful it is to me. What about you? Is in the love of Jesus something wonderful, oh, wonderful, oh, wonderful. Is in the love of Jesus something wonderful, oh, wonderful it is to me. Hallelujah. Is in the love of Jesus something Wonderful, oh, wonderful, I say, wonderful, is in the love of Jesus something wonderful, oh, wonderful it is to him. Amen, amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power of might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Singing, amen. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power of might. Be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I see the glory of the Lord descending in this place to bless us once again. I see the glory of the Lord Descending in this place to bless us once again. What do you see? I see the glory of the Lord. Descending in this place to bless us once again. I see the glory of the Lord. Descending in this place to bless us once again, what do you see? Descending in this place to bless us once again, I see the glory of the Lord. Descending in this place to bless us once again. Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever, is the same today, and mighty to save. Jesus, the same yesterday. I say, Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever, is the same today, and mighty to save. Is the Lord, he changeth not. Is the Lord, he changeth not. And he changeth not. Is the Lord, he changeth not. Call upon me in the time of challenge. Call upon me, 
I will answer you. In the time of challenge, call upon me. I will answer you. Call upon me. In the day of trouble, call upon me. I will answer you. He will answer, oh, he will answer, answer every prayer, go to him in faith believing, he will answer every prayer, he will answer. Answer every prayer, he will answer. He will answer, he will answer, answer every prayer. My God will answer. Answer every prayer, go to him in faith, believing. Our faith in God is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches why his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God, he's on the throne. Have faith in God, he watches for his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God, he's on the throne. Have faith in God, he watches for his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God. Amen. You are welcome to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. We want to specially recognize the presence of our converts, invitees, and visitors who are coming to our headquarters church for their very first time. So if tonight is your first time of coming to study the Bible with us or coming to the church, please can you signify by raising up your hand. You take another step of faith, rise up as we recognize you. Please, wherever you are, can you rise up? As we are rising up, our ushers are there at your side. They are going to give you a sleep to feel. Please, we want you to complete the sleep correctly. Write a capital letter so that it will be eligible enough for us to reach out to you and help you further. After which, you return the same sleep back to the ushers. You can please be seated. We want to rise up as we sing from our congregational, as we take our congregational hymn from our gospel is our songs, number 22. Our gospel is our songs, number 22. 
simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus, that is all. Brightly does the Spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. Why he leads, why he leads, I cannot fall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Singing, if my way be clear. Praying, if the path be drear. If it danger, and for him, trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting him while life shall last. Trusting him till earth be past. Till within the jasper wall, trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moment fly, trusting as the day go, go. trusting him, whatever before, trusting Jesus, that is all. Oh! 
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers, chapter 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt! Or would God we had died in this wilderness! And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. 
Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness... They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning, and gathered them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised. For we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword. Because ye are turned away from the Lord, therefore the Lord will not be with you but they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them even unto Hormah. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we give our tithe and offering to the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the fr first fruit of thy increase. So shall thy pan be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. We want to raise up our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. So dip your hand into your purse, into your pocket, and raise up whatever you have brought to give to the Lord. Our Father, we thank you very much because of the privilege to give unto you. Out of the abundance you have blessed us with, you have brought, we have brought this token to offer unto you. As we give to you, I pray that the work of the Lord will not suffer any lack. The work of the kingdom will be expanded and will bless the givers. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our ushers, our leaders are passing the bag around. Please drop your tithe and offering into the bags that are being passed around.
You're worried about tomorrow and what the future holds. Your mind is filled with questions as you face the unknown. You spend so many sleepless nights trying.
We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
people as we sing. Grant us this our one request that we may know your holiness. Wandering has and selfishness. We recognize our desperate need, impurity in thought and deed. you must do to turn your people as to you. Fill us, Lord, this very heart. You fill us with your sacred power. As your people, we might be all that you will have us be. Send your peoples as to you. Do a lot what you must do to tend your people as to you. Do a lot what you must do. To tell your people as to you. Do a lot what you must do. To tell your people as to you. Remember. How to gauge that miracle whatsoever he says unto you do it and as we pray I mentioned the name of Jesus your miracle will meet you there the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. As we begin the GCK for this month, titled for the theme, I will present Jesus. Jesus has gone ahead to prepare the grounds of Abba Abia State, Nigeria. From the 25th to the 30th, of April 2024 at 1600 hours GMT every evening and on Sunday at 0700 hours GMT the power of the Lord is set to turn around the lives of all and sundry and he is ready to perfect the affairs of all men prepping change makers in the society and the world at large through his servant Pastor Dr. W. F. Komili. Youths that will become godly catalysts in this present world. Presenting the Impact Academy for Youths on the 27th of April, 2024. A minister called to greater service on the battlefield and in the vineyard of God must be alert, resisting the devil always. We bring to you the Ministers and Young Professionals Conference titled Strength 
for a fainting minister. God is there already. We are ready. Abba, Abia State, are you ready? As we go out to evangelize, one thing we must make sure of, we're not just into religion or tradition. We want the souls to be really saved. If we go out then, and we're preaching the gospel, and we just whitewash them, and they don't have a genuine experience of turning away from their sin, and they are not really, truly, genuinely born again from above. We're wasting our lives. We're wasting our skills. We're wasting our efforts because except those people have genuine experience of salvation and they can point at it and they can say this is it i got the real thing and there is a real transformation in their lives except that has taken place when to religion was the use laboring sweating running climbing descending and uh, you know here and there and the people are not born through the cleansing of the water of the world. And they are not born by the Spirit. They must have a genuine experience of salvation. If we are really committed to soul winning. Soul winning is the act of winning souls to Christ. Number one they must be convinced and convicted of their sins and they must be willing to come out knowing the danger of remaining in sin number two it's separating sinners from the sinful society if you preach if you say you love them and you're bringing them out of their sin genuine salvation means you are separating them the sinners from the sinful societies number three you are bringing them out of an evil generation they must be removed and separated from that sinful society number four you are removing them from their old sins if you say you are laboring on them and they remain in the old sins, old tradition, old habit, old lifestyle, they're not saved. To be saved means that they come out of their old sins. There must be that total separation from the old life, the old sins. When his souls mean we're snatching them from the grip of Satan, from the iron hand of Satan. Those who have been captives and slaves of Satan, they have been into occultism, they have been into idol worship. They recover themselves from the snare of the devil, even though they were taken captive before. This is what conversion means. It means pulling them out of the fire. They're almost getting to hell, almost entering into hellfire. And if you say you have any use to them and you are helping them to get saved, you're pulling them out of the fire. Watch and preach the gospel unto every creature. Is the Lord speaking to you today? If the Lord has spoken to you, you'll speak to God now. He said, wait in Jerusalem and be endued with power and pray unto the Lord. And the Spirit of God will come upon every one of us afresh. And we will do the work we will not fail. Brethren, Richard from God's servant and mouthpiece peace is in line with Christ's mandate as recorded in the gospel according to St. John chapter 15 verse 16. There, the Lord Jesus made it so clear that he has ordained us to go 
and bear fruits, and that our fruit should remain. It means then that as we evangelize, we must have the right focus. The right focus is bringing souls out of sin into righteousness and preparation to enter the kingdom of God. And so, in this church, our Father in the Lord, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, has outlined the four critical aspects that will lead to successful soul winning. Number one, the sinners must be convinced and convicted of their sins and be made willing to come out of their sins to avoid the danger of remaining in sin. Number two, separating them from the sinful society, the sin, this, this society is so polluted, so sinful, that when we bring them to the knowledge of salvation, there must be a clear difference between them and the society that is sin polluted, perverted. And then, number four, we must remove them from their old traditions, old habits. We must ensure total separation from, the, from all forms of ungodly lifestyle. In summary, all true disciples of Christ, hungry for souls and spiritual children, which will lead to pleasing God, making God happy, must not stop at anything until the unsaved souls are snatched from the grip of Satan and pulling them out of the fire. Every sinner is near the fire of hell and unfortunately doesn't know it. It takes a soul winner to pull the sinner out of this fire. So the Lord Jesus, in commissioning us, has made adequate provision for us to succeed in this assignment. He saves, sanctifies, and baptizes all true disciples with the Holy Spirit so that we can go and make sense out of sinners to transform lives in, unto God's glory. And so, brothers and sisters, this church has come to us a cause of prayer. It's a golden opportunity we have. Again, this April, in the coming GCK, that we hold in Abia State from 25th of this month to 30th. It is going to be a time of glorious transformation through Christ. Therefore, let us join our hands and hearts together with the convener, our Father and the Lord, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui, to make it a time of winning souls for Christ. Remember, the assurance given to us in the scripture, in 4 John, the epistle of John chapter 5, verse 14, it says that if we ask anything according to his will, he heard us. Therefore, this is the time to pray earnestly to be a fruitful soul winner. So please, make sure you open your mouth now and pray and tell the Lord, make me a soul winner. Give me the passion. Give me the wisdom to go and separate sinning souls from the world and Satan and make them children of God. Let us pray now. Our Father, we are grateful to you for this rare opportunity we have to be used by you. It's a privilege for us to be used by you. You've counted us worthy to do this great assignment. So Lord, I pray that all of us that have had this charge we run with it. We go with a passion that will make us not just laboring in vain, but we are going to ensure that whoever we reach with the gospel will be made to have a change of life. We thank you for your servant and Father in the Lord. We believe you are preparing him for this great encounter in Abba. Father, fill him with your power that come 25th to 30th is going to be a time of glorious trust. Formation indeed. Thank you, Lord, because I believe you have answered this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayer, and everyone shout a big amen. Amen. Everybody said, Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the teaching spirit that you have given us, the spirit of truth. We're asking, Lord, that tonight, you teach us your word yourself and make it personal to everyone. And Lord, I pray you give us the wisdom for personal application of your word to our lives, our spiritual life, our family life, our Christian life, our professional life, every way, every area of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that the study of the word will profit everyone. 
every member, every minister, every invitee, and everyone that will listen to the Bible study, even tonight in Jesus' name. Help us not to take your word for granted, not to come as usual and then just hear as usual and not make an impact in the life. We pray, Lord, that your word, every detail, everything you say will make impact transformational in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to our Bible study again. We appreciate those who are coming for the first time, and we appreciate those who have been coming every time. We're praying that the Word of God will bear fruit, much fruit, more fruit, and greater fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We are studying the epistle of James, general epistle to all the believers. Today we're coming to study three. And we're looking at James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it a given to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And then in verse 6, it tells us, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Those are the two verses we're looking at today. It's talking about wisdom. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. When we talk about wisdom, there is human wisdom. And if we have human wisdom, we can go far in the world, in the things we do, in the things we decide, and in the things we achieve, human wisdom. But there's not only human wisdom, there's devilish wisdom, horrific, terrible, horrifying wisdom. That's the wisdom of the devil. And the Bible talks about that. Of course, we don't want that. And if that has been in our lives, we want to purge ourselves of every satanic and uh, horrible uh, wisdom so that we can have the, the wisdom of God. And then there is the spiritual wisdom. That is the wisdom that comes from the Spirit of God. That's actually what the scripture here is talking about. If any of you lack the wisdom of the Spirit, if any of you lack the wisdom revealed in the scriptures, if any of you lack spiritual, scriptural wisdom, let him ask of God and let him ask him faith when he asks, nothing wavering. Because if he wavers, if he doubts, if he has some belief, nothing shall be given unto him. We're talking tonight and preaching tonight and studying tonight on passionate importunate prayer for pure practical wisdom in james chapter 3 verse 17 james 3 verse 17 it says but the wisdom that is from above that's the wisdom we're studying about tonight the wisdom from above the wisdom from the throne of god the wisdom from the spirit of god himself the wisdom that is from above is forced pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, and without partiality and without hypocrisy. It tells us about this supernatural wisdom, this spiritual wisdom, this wisdom from the Spirit of God. And it says the characteristic of that wisdom is that that wisdom is pure, 
not impure. It doesn't lead us to impurity. It doesn't lead us to pollution. It doesn't lead us to evil. The Spirit of God leads us with the wisdom that is false, pure. And then it says, the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom spiritual, the wisdom from the Spirit of God is peaceable. It doesn't lead us to be pugnacious or fighting or violence. Any wisdom that leads us to pollution, any wisdom that leads us to fighting and, you know, being pugnacious, it's not of God, it's of the devil. The wisdom that we are studying about and the wisdom we are praying about and the wisdom we want from above is pure, is peaceable, is gentle. The wisdom that comes from God so influences us and so impacts our lives, it makes us gentle. If we are aggressive, if we are boisterous, if we are destructive, and if we oppress other people, whatever wisdom we use to oppress other people, that's not wisdom from above. The wisdom from above and the wisdom the scripture says which you pray for is uh, first of all pure, is peaceable, is gentle, and is easy to be entreated. That he is as we interact together one with another. The wisdom we have is not the wisdom that never forgives. It's not the wisdom that punishes a neighbor for what he did in the past year. And we want to operate in the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God makes us to forget all the offenses of the past year, all the offenses of past life, and it makes us to be easily entreated. Once somebody says, I'm sorry, genuinely, they will say, that's all right, because we have the Spirit of God, and that Spirit gives us the wisdom that is easy to be entreated. In fact, this wisdom is full of mercy and good fruits. That's the kind of wisdom we want, and that's the kind of wisdom we're learning about in the scriptures and it says it is impartial without partiality it's not selective in the application of the word of god to a or b or c to the brother or to the sister he is impartial and the wisdom from above is without hypocrisy that's the wisdom we do not have naturally. That's the wisdom we do not have humanly. That's the wisdom we do not have by either human education or human training. It takes the Spirit of God to bring that wisdom into our lives. And that's why we pray, and that's why we pray passionately, importunately, so that we can have this practical wisdom that comes from above. Once again tonight, passionate, importunate prayer for pure, practical wisdom. We're looking at three things as we study tonight. Number one, perceiving the wisdom we all lack. The wisdom we all lack, you and I, there is a kind of wisdom we lack. And you and the people of the world, and even the people in the church, there's a kind of wisdom we all lack. And we perceive the wisdom we all lack. Number two is praying for wisdom from the Lord. The wisdom that comes from the Lord, not from the books of the world, not from the theater of the world, not from the activities of the world, and not from all the areas of the world. But this one comes from the Lord, praying for wisdom from the Lord. Number three, possessing his wisdom in our lives. It's something to study and it's another thing to possess. It's something to know. It's another thing for us to operate and to lead and to lead our lives in the wisdom that he has given. Number three, possessing of his wisdom. We don't possess all his wisdom, but we possess the portion he gives us. We possess of his wisdom. Uh, in uh, our lives. Let's come to number one. Number one, uh, receiving the wisdom 
we all lack. And we come to James again, chapter 1, verse 5. In James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. It says we should ask for the wisdom the wisdom which we lack. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, the wisdom for workmanship beyond natural wisdom. Number two, the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. Number three, the wealth of wisdom higher than the neighbor's wisdom. Look at number one. Number one is the wisdom for workmanship beyond natural wisdom. That's the kind of wisdom we have which is natural. Everyone has wisdom to do some specific things in life and it's natural. We're born with that and yet beyond that natural wisdom, we need the wisdom for workmanship. We can do the work in the world. We can do everything we need to do in the world. After all, uh, the people who are not born again, the people who are not saved, the people who are not regenerated, the people whose lives and hearts have not been transformed. They do some kind of work. They are professionals who are not born again. There are, you know, literally many people who do not have the Spirit of God, and yet they do natural things, and they do that by natural wisdom. But we're called to a kind of work that is beyond the natural, a kind of work that is beyond the ordinary. And when God calls us to that, he has to give us the kind of wisdom for workmanship beyond our natural wisdom. He tells us in Exodus chapter 31, reading from verse 3, he says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Here is the work to be done in the tabernacle. Here is the work to be done amidst the commonwealth of Israel. Here is work to be done by the people of God for the worship of God. And yet God has to say, I've chosen him. I've appointed him, I've selected him, and given him, number one, the Spirit of God. And now he says, in wisdom, because of the workmanship of what he has to do. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, to devise cunning works, craft, and to work in gold and in silver, and in brass. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, in the cutting of stones, the natural things that maybe other people can do, but he needed the wisdom of God to be able to do that cutting stones and having the iron bending and everything. God says, I want him to do it for me. And I want to give a specification from heaven. And I want him to do it according to all the specifications from heaven. And he needs supernatural wisdom. And it says in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And that tells us then when God gives us work to do, what we do is not going to be in the natural wisdom of the world. In the natural wisdom we are born with, but in the wisdom of the Spirit of God that he grants unto us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading here from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Here Paul the Apostle says he is not caught in stone, he is not a bending iron, he is not carving wood, he is preaching. Is declaring the mind of God and preaching the gospel. Is declaring the word of salvation and the wonder of sanctification and readiness for the coming of the Lord. And it does that not in his natural wisdom. 
the ability, natural ability to teach and natural ability to put things together and interpret. It says no, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Uh, look at uh, verse um, uh, look at verse 8 there. In verse 8 it says, which none of the princes of the world knew. That is this wisdom, the wisdom from above. The princes of the world, they don't know about this wisdom for a they know not it. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There is wisdom then that comes from above for workmanship. And the watchmen of the Lord and the workmen of the Lord and the preachers of the gospel, we cannot just come in a natural wisdom with a natural intelligence and say, I can do it this way and that way. No, I'm a teacher in the world so I can come in the church and teach. No, I'm a preacher, I'm a public speaker in the world and because of the wisdom I've gathered as a teacher, public speaker in the world, then I can come to the ministry and demonstrate the same. It says no. The wisdom we have for workmanship in the house of God. The wisdom we have for dividing the word of truth and bringing sinners to salvation it says it's not the wisdom which the princes of this world which they have will speak wisdom from above. Come to number two here. Number two is the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. The weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. We're coming to First Kings chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 6. First Kings chapter 2 verse 6. Do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his own head go down to the grave in peace here david was talking to solomon and understand solomon had not yet received the other kind of wisdom, the supernatural wisdom, which he prayed for later. But at this time now, before that prayer for the wisdom, he already possessed some wisdom. And David said to him, Do thou therefore according to thy wisdom, according to the wisdom, native wisdom. And maybe you have that native wisdom, maybe you have the human wisdom, but you can still pray for something higher, something greater that comes from God. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Now therefore hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man, and knoweth what thou Otis to do unto him, but is our head bring thou down to the grave with blood. Here again, David was still talking to Solomon about another man, and he says, <laughs> Solomon, uh, you see, this man offended me and offended the kingdom, and I couldn't handle it because I, I was afraid of them. These sons of Zeruiah are too hard for me. I couldn't deal with them, but Solomon, deal with them according to thy wisdom, native wisdom, to handle other people, to subdue them, to subject them, to oppress them, to take away anything they have and to stop them from living. He says, Solomon, you have the wisdom, native wisdom. What kind of wisdom do we have that can oppress other people, judge other people, clamp down on other people, destroy the progress of other people, even, even make their lives so delicate and so tough that they don't want to live anymore. There is native wisdom that people have, but it's something greater than native wisdom. And Solomon knew that. That's why in chapter 3, chapter 3, 
see we're reading from verse 5. It tells us in Gibeah, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, and Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy great favor according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to seek on his throne as it is this day look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says and now O Lord my God thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father and I am but a little child I know not to go out or to come in remember he had native wisdom he had wisdom he was born with he had wisdom he acquired by human education and yet he said i come to a position i come to a place i need to lead the people of God and to lead them. This is a spiritual matter. I do not know to go out or come in in this spiritual situation. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this so great thy people. He needed wisdom from above. That's what the scripture is, is saying. Whatever wisdom we think we've got, and we've got some wisdom, otherwise we'll not be where we are today in profession, in the family, we'll not be where we are today in our Christian life. We've got some wisdom, and yet there's still wisdom beyond the wisdom we have got now, the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. And as we call upon the Lord and pray, it will give us the needed wisdom in Jesus' name. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, reading from verse 1. I said in my heart, go to now, and I will prove thee with mercy. Therefore, enjoy pleasure, and behold... This also is vanity. Solomon came to a period in his life after he had used native wisdom, after he had requested for supernatural wisdom, and he received supernatural wisdom. He came to a point in his life that he wanted to look at the things of the world and taste the pleasure of the world. He said he gave himself to that. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, it says, I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine and also acquainting mine heart with wisdom. Now he didn't, uh, he couldn't uh, figure out supernatural wisdom native wisdom and he said i want to taste i'm going to give myself to wine i'm going to give myself to revelry i'm going to give myself to the things of the world and to lay hold on uh, on falling and he says till i might see what was the good for the sons of men which they should do under heaven all the days of their life. Uh, look at verse um, 9 there. In verse 9, so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom 
remained in me which wisdom is lead back to the natural wisdom the supernatural wisdom had left him because when he married all those hundreds of women god departed from him the power of god the knowledge of god the truth of god departed from him and the gift of god the wisdom supernatural departed from him but the natural wisdom remained he said he gave himself to all those uh, things that dissipated his life that destroyed his life that cut him away from god he backslid and yet he said my wisdom remains with is me and then he tells us in uh, in the next verse it says and whatsoever mine eyes desired i kept not from them i withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my portion of all my labor. He lost self-control. He lost self-denial. He just gave himself to whatever pleasure and whatever work of the flesh that demanded his attention. And yet he said, my wisdom remains with me. We shall be careful. We don't fall into the trap of thinking we still have wisdom because we can gauge that and measure that and do that